This is Sony's 10 to 18 mm f4, and this is probably one of the best value lenses you can get from Sony right now. So good ultra wide lenses that cover a full frame sensor are super expensive. And I was starting to get into the video real estate market and all I had was my 24 to 70. And if you've ever tried to shoot real estate with a 24 to 70, you know how limiting that actually is. 24 sounds wide and it is, but when it comes to shooting actual architecture it just is not near wide enough that's actually that's just this is my opinion i'm sure some people are able to get away with it but for me 24 millimeters does not cut it it's super super limiting in super small areas where you want everything to feel you know larger than life so in frames where you can't get the ceiling and the floor in frame it's hard for people that are you know looking at these properties to get a idea uh, of how big the space actually is so when you have that ultra wide that allows you to get the whole room in one perspective so that it makes it easier for the viewers to understand what exactly they're looking at and if it's kind of important when you're considering buying a house i guess so i started looking for ultra wide lenses now, they're not actually technically called ultra wide lenses, I think. I'm just calling them that because it makes sense. Ultra wide, they're stupidly wide. But Sony has quite a few different offerings. But for me, they had two main issues. First off, no ability to use an ND filter because the front element really pops out. And so you actually, there's no thread to screw anything on. Now, they do have a drop in filter system where you have to take the lens off and you put it on the back of the lens here. Every time you want to change the exposure, you have to take your lens off and do that. That is just not at all worth it to me, especially when you're paying that price. The larger issue for me is the actual price of the thing. Sony's 12 to 24 G Master is, I think, over $2,000 for very much a niche lens for me. It's not something that I'm using all of the time. Spending $2,000 on that didn't make sense for me. As much of a business investment as it is, I still wanted to look at other options before I would, you know, make that massive purchase. So I started looking around at some of the cheaper options. And the thing is, all of the cheaper options seem to only work with APS-C sensors. I couldn't find anything good that covered a full frame sensor. And if you're wondering why that's such a big deal, uh, I shoot on the Sony A7S III, and it actually does have an APS-C shooting mode, which if you don't know, that essentially crops into the sensor to basically have the same size as an APS-C sensor. But the Sony A7S III's sensor is only 4K resolution. So when you crop in to that size, you're limiting yourself to only 1080p. And for professional work for me, I didn't want to compromise that. And I know there's the whole argument, is it necessary? Probably not, but still, I wanna keep everything that I'm shooting and delivering to my clients at 4K. You can see here the amount of crop difference that this adds as well. So um, definitely something to be aware of. If you have something like, uh, I think it's the A7 III, you know, where you can still crop in and still shoot at a 4K resolution, Maybe this is something to consider, but for me, it didn't make sense. So at a kind of a loss, I thought the only option for me was to opt for Sony's more expensive glass. I was about to purchase this lens and uh, that's when I saw this video. So Maddie Papoya posted this video and, uh, and he describes everything that I need in a lens under $900, which is mind blowing, less than half of the price of the Sony G Masters had. Well, actually, if you look on eBay right now, you can easily pick one up for, I'm seeing 450 bucks for some cheaper listings. That is crazy. A lens with this much versatility for 450 bucks is not bad. Not bad at all. So naturally I picked one up. And honestly, it's everything that Maddie made it up to be. And if you're in the market for a budget ultra wide lens, this might be the one for you. This thing is stupidly wide. It is crazy. I don't think most people understand how wide 10 millimeters actually is. I'm shooting on a 24 millimeter right now. So we're gonna switch it out for the 12 millimeter right here. Super wide, right? Nope. There's 10 millimeters. I'm, I, didn't, I didn't move away from the camera. I'm still at the exact same spot that I was. And I'm, I'm literally right here. I'm literally six inches away from the lens. This is crazy. So we're gonna get into some of these issues here, including this horrible vignetting you see on the edges. This is not great, but the amazing thing is, is once you zoom in past 12 millimeters, it's gone. 
And if you use active stabilization, it's, it's you know, automatically gone. We're gonna get into those a little bit deeper here in a second, but just appreciate how absolutely wide this thing actually is. All right, so let's get into the imperfections of this lens. So these are kind of the caveats, the things to be aware of when you're buying this. Uh, it is very much not perfect. You are compromising versus something like those $2,000 lenses, but it's that price that makes this so special. So yeah, a few things to note here is that this is technically an APS-C lens. That is why you have that insane vignetting on the sides when you're fully zoomed down. This is designed for those smaller sensors, so it doesn't cover a full frame area at its widest point. You'll see the vignetting the most notably on its widest focal length. At 10 millimeters, this thing, you know, we'll have very much vin a ton of vignetting around the sides to the point to where it's quite unusable. Again, this is just because it's developed for APS-C sensors. So you don't only have vignetting on that widest uh, point as well. You do have vignetting at the other end of the spectrum. So 17 to 18 millimeters, you do get a little bit vignetting there. It does kind of come back in, not nearly as much, but it is a little noticeable, especially in something like photos, where you're using the full width of the sensor rather than the 16 by 9 crop. So what I would recommend is just using the range from about 12 to 17 millimeter. That is what I would consider the very usable range of this lens. So. That is not a bad trade-off. Now that's just something to be aware of. Not once has that been an issue for me. And if I have ever shot anything, it's like, oh, I noticed a little bit of vignetting there. Just crop in a tiny little bit and it's perfect. And if you're using the Sony a7S 3 something that I'd highly recommend is using the active image stabilization. So the active image stabilization crops in at 1.1 times, which, you know, crops in a little bit into the sensor. And since you're having to kind of crop in anyways with this, it just makes sense to use that. So if you're planning on using this for photos, there's a bit more to be aware of here. That usable range is a bit smaller. So instead of from 12 to 17 millimeter, I would say 13 to 16 millimeters is the usable range for photos. And the reason for that is because you're not taking photos in a 16 by nine aspect ratio. When you're taking video, you have this three by two sensor that you're taking a 16 by nine crop on. Okay, so you're not using the full height of the sensor, but for photos, you are. So you're seeing a lot more on the top and bottom, which very much reveals some of the vignetting that you're getting here. So um, once again, the usable range for this for photos would be around 13 to 16 millimeter, which isn't as much as video, but again, totally, totally usable. I've shot photos on this and it's they turn out great. So the second thing to note with this is the build quality. It's not perfect. It's very much plastic and very much you will feel it. It's light. It's it's pretty light and that's that's great. Coming from the 24 to 70 which is a brick. This thing is crazy how small it is, but the build quality is very much worse than something like the G Masters obviously. And that's not to say that it's bad, but it is notably worse. Um, I very much think you can beat this thing up and it would still be alive. There's no question about that, but if you very much try to destroy your lenses, if you're very rough with them, you may want to consider that. Okay, so arguably one of the bigger trade-offs for me regarding this lens is the limitations with the aperture. So it's only an f4, so when you're used to wider apertures or if you like to shoot at night, this does kind of make it harder, um, unfortunately. The 24-70 is an f2.8 and going from that to, to this f4, feels a little limiting, uh, but when it comes to real estate stuff, that's actually not necessarily better, but it's not bad at all because, you know, if I was shooting real estate, I'd still, you know, put it at that F4 because you want uh, the focal plane to be a bit wider. You want a lot more to be in focus rather than, you know, limiting the viewer uh, viewer's attention to one specific area of this house that you're showing off. So for real estate work, this works really well. And that's not to say that you can't get some background blur when you're really close to the uh, lens. You may be able to get a bit of background blur, but since it's so wide, even if it was an F1.8, you're not going to get that much much anyways. But uh, when it comes to that vlogging medium, if that's something that you're into, uh, you're not going to get much of that depth of field that you may find in more expensive glass. Like I said, it wouldn't be that much since, you know, the wider you go, the less compression you're going to have. You're not going to have that much uh, background blur even on some of the more expensive stuff, but that is something to be aware of. But that is literally it when it comes to the cons of this lens, at least that I've thought of. Everything from here are just upsides they're pros they're great hey real quick while i have you here i want to talk to you guys about cuts clothing they reached out to me and offered to send over a little care package and i've been wanting to try out cuts for a really long time so they sent over this awesome shirt as well as these super sick joggers i gotta say the fit on both of these 
are absolutely great, especially the shirt. It's tied around the chest and then it tapers off on the bottom, which is ideal when it comes to these shirts. That's exactly what I want. The fabric is great because it's stretchy and it's super soft. It's like cotton, but stretchy. It's, I, I can't explain it. You're just gonna have, to, gonna have to try it. It's awesome. They're super high quality, extremely comfortable. And honestly, you can really wear this wherever. If you're going out for a run, these are great. If you're going out for a business meeting, very much this works as well. So the versatility that Cuts clothing really brings, I absolutely love them. Generally with shirts that have this feel, they'd suffer from stretching or shrinking and these haven't. So if you're worried about the shape retention, you don't have to anymore. The black joggers are great, but when it comes to the color, I love, love this shirt. And this is absolutely something that I'm gonna be initiating into my daily wear. So you should use this discount code to get 15% off your order. I can't remember what it is, but I think it's the Micah Powell, if I'm right, 15% off. The right, whatever it actually is, will be up on screen right here. So totally go check them out. Whoa. <clears throat> All right, back to the video. If you're worried about distortion or sharpness, this thing is super sharp. And when it comes to distortion, of course, you know, it's basically a fisheye lens. So you're gonna get a bit of distortion, especially when it comes to vertical lines. Um, so you, be aware of that. Um, but honestly, it's not something that I've worried about too much. It still comes out and looks great. Stabilization, this thing has OSS built in, which is incredible pair that with ibis and active stabilization in camera it is literally the smoothest handheld experience you're gonna get you cannot get better than this going handheld has never been more smooth than pairing an oss lens with ibis it is wonderful if you haven't tried it I highly recommend it now that doesn't mean you can ditch your gimbal for everything obviously for real estate stuff you very much need that gimbal to keep the uh, vertical plane even this is still very cool to have that added oss is always welcome so the biggest pro aside from the price is for sure the size of this thing it's super compact compared to my 24 to 70 which makes it a breeze to carry around and you know, compared to when I do have my 24 to 70 on my camera, this feels like an entirely different one. Um, it's incredible coming from you know a, a massive weight on the camera to this thing. You feel much more uh, agile, I guess, in the way you're shooting. Which for me personally, I like a bit of a heavier setup. But this is cool to kind of uh, you know whenever you're just having fun and you want to shoot something, having that lighter lens can very much make it easier to carry around. And it's small enough to where you will always find this in my camera bag. Never is it taking up too much space to where, hey, I have to compromise, I can't put this in my bag. This thing is tiny and it'll always be in there. And once again, the biggest reason to get this is the price. This thing is stupidly cheap. The value here is unreal. This thing retails for $899, but you can find it brand new, even on B&H, for $550. And if you really want to get it cheaper and do what I did, and I highly recommend doing this, is go on eBay and check out what listings they have there. I picked this up for $450, and honestly, that's probably the, some of the best money that I've ever spent. This thing is incredible. For $450, you cannot beat this. So obviously, you do have some compromises versus something like Sony's more expensive glass. Does it really outweigh the benefit of the cost factor that goes into this? No, I don't think so. I think the uh, value that this brings compared to something like those more expensive ultra wide lenses doesn't make sense to go with them versus this. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great lens. If you're, in the, if you're in the market for this, I highly recommend at least just checking this out. Um, I don't think you could go wrong with one of these. You know, to have that extra point of view that you can't get with a 24 to 70, the stupidly wide adds kind of a really unique and creative perspective. It's not something that I see myself using in, you know, the film world whenever I'm, uh, you know, on a DP project, but still can be very fun and you can be very creative with these ultra wides. So, uh, yeah, and if you have your gear that allows you to be more creative, that's you know the whole point, and that's pretty great. So, so yeah, let me know if you guys found this video helpful, or if you liked it, or if you don't like it, that's totally fine. If you if you want to hit that dislike button, uh, it's it's there. Go do do you. Um, I recently became monetized, which is crazy. After the Helios video kind of blew up, it's sitting at like three hundred seventy thousand right now, which is crazy, unreal. It keeps going up. Oh my goodness. So yeah, I got monetized, which is pretty cool. And now, you know, making 30 bucks a month from the YouTube content is pretty awesome. So, uh, you know, pays for a bill. It's pretty cool, can't complain. 
So yeah, let me know what you guys think. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Uh, please, you know, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. My Instagram will be somewhere down in the description or here on screen. Uh, I'd love to talk to you guys. I always enjoy it when you guys reach out to me. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. I will see you in a bit. Fun.